talking a little bit about wind loads, but instead of our normal focus on buildings, we're going to pivot a little bit and talk about wind loads on non-building structures. Um, this graphic or this picture here, I think ho hopefully starts to paint the picture that, yeah, our buildings are really important, um, but uh, we do a lot of appendages um, and ancillary structures, things like screen walls, things like solar PV, um, things like um, rooftop units, canopies, and um, these are the areas, especially for me out here in California, that wind load always controls and the code is often silent. And so um, uh, we'll spend our time here today speaking about those specific uh, types of, of buildings. So before I do, I just want to kind of explain to you um, a, a little bit. So Maria mentioned I chair our NCSEA Wind Engineering Committee. Um, as part of that, um, there's some advocacy that happens where we reach out to practicing engineers and um, ask you guys, hey, hey, what, what are you feeling? Uh, and so what I want to do is just show you the results of a survey from about 10 years ago. And the reason I picked an older survey is to hopefully show you full circle um, what happened as a result of this survey. There is a more recent survey and, spoiler alert, a new survey will be coming out in a couple of months. And I hope as practicing engineers, it finds its way to you guys and you guys can provide uh, input. But in 2011, a survey was provided and it asked uh, practicing engineers many questions, but the one I want to talk about with you guys here today is what modifications or additions would you like to see specific to wind design in ASCE 7? And um, <laughs> a little bit un unsurprisingly, the top answer was uh, to simplify the provisions. Uh, we will not um, spend a lot of time today talking about that, but I will um, where the code remains complicated, I will spend some time trying to explain the, the reason behind it and hopefully simplify what we need to do as practicing engineers. Second one was to go back to UBC. I will promise you here today that's not happening, but I think the essence of the comment is still valid. Uh, we, we, were, we need to strive to keep our wind provisions simple. Stop changing, um, which inherently is... Um, I'm sympathetic to. At the same time, I will acknowledge that it's impossible to simplify provisions without changing. So there's a little bit of give and take here. And this fourth one is actually the one I, I want to spend our time on and, and we're going to be um, spending our presentation on here today. There were a lot of people who said, hey, can you provide guidance on some things that aren't currently in ASCE 7? Things like canopies, tall parapets, solar PV, screen walls. There were enough of those that... Um, it compelled me to write this presentation such that um, some of them you'll hear today are making their way slowly into ASCE 7 and into IBC. Some of them are not, uh, but it's important for us as practicing engineers to have resources. The last one said, hey, good job, you've done it already. Um, so what did we do as a WIND committee, AS, uh, NCSA WIND committee? Well, we went to ASC 7 and we made a handful of recommendations. I'm just going to go ahead and move through them here. Um, the ones in black are important recommendations, not relevant to what we are talking about here today. There were recommendations to consolidate and reduce the number of wind methods and also to provide some guidance on irregular building configurations. The ones we are going to talk about here today, um, we NCSCA recommended that we provide explicit criteria in ASCE 7. In this case, it was 716 for commonly encountered conditions like canopies, tall parapets, mechanical screens, and PV panels. We ask them to provide design procedures on for rooftop units on taller buildings and also to simplify the solid freestanding wall provisions. So what will we talk about here today? Well, color coding those a little bit. We're going to talk about rooftop equipment. Um, one of the things that was asked of last, uh, last survey, we're going to talk about solar PV. We'll dive into what I think is maybe the number one question I get from people, uh, rooftop screen walls. We will talk about solid freestanding walls and signs, even though those provisions haven't largely changed over the years, they are confusing and we'll dive into them a little bit. We'll talk about tall parapets. Uh, we know some of our architectural friends in lieu of sticking a um, rooftop screen wall might just extend the parapet up a little bit and we're, we as practicing engineers are a little bit confused about what wind loads to put on that. While we're talking about non-building structures, I figured we could spend a few minutes talking about tanks and silos. There's a big change that happened in ASC 716 in this world. We won't spend much time there, but just make you aware of it. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about, I don't know if this is grammatically correct, trellises, um, multi multiple trellis uh, members, but in, in essence, what we really mean is repetitive um, types of uh, members to talk about how wind loads those members or reloads those members. 
And then we'll finish up talking about canopies, probably the most common appendage that we have on our buildings um, that we want to make sure we know how to address. So those are the topics here for today.